Hey everyone, this is Paul with another Insider demo video for all of our Insider friends. This one's coming from Redmond. We're actually at home for the summer. Um, pretty unprecedented, to be honest. Anyway, what we're doing now is I'm going to show you a, a little known behavior of database snapshots that I was reminded of earlier this week. I actually did a SQL Server Magazine blog article about it, but I thought I'd actually show you it in a demo. The interesting behavior is about how much memory is used in the buffer pool when you're using a database snapshot. So as you probably all know, when you create a database snapshot, it gets crash recovered, and the only time that database pages from the source database are pushed into the database snapshot is when they change after the snapshot has been created. However, there's some very interesting behavior when you're accessing the unchanged pages through the snapshot. So let's have a look at that. So first off, I'm going to restore a database that I've got. And you can get this from out on our past conferences page. So this is a, an 800 meg sales database that goes very quickly. And now I'm going to create a database snapshot on it. Creating the database snapshot, you have to give one snapshot file for each of the data files in the database. I've only got one, so I go ahead and create my snapshot. And let's have a look and see how big the database snapshot is on disk. So here's our snapshot file. Now it looks like it's 200 meg. If I go ahead and say properties, the size on disk there is actually only 128k. That's exactly what I would expect. Okay. So even though the snapshot file presents itself as the size of my database, it's actually not. And how's this is the interesting thing. If I go into the source database, and do a select count star from my big sales table. It pulls in all that data into the buffer pool. If I then go into the snapshot database and do the same thing, I get the exact same result, obviously. But what about how much memory has been used and, how, and whether the snapshot itself has changed size? So the snapshot file, if I do size on disk, 128K. Nothing was pushed into the database snapshot at all. But what about how much space is used in the buffer pool? So I have this other script, and these two these scripts will be in the, the zip file that the newsletter will point to. So this is from a blog post I did a couple of weeks ago about wasted space in the buffer pool. And this basically looks at the DMV sys.dmos buffer descriptors and aggregates the information together. And what I've got is a script that's going to run through the entire buffer pool, looking for every database and seeing how much space is used up. And I've actually got a, a filter saying, don't tell me anything unless the database is used up uh, 100 meg or so. So I go ahead and run that. And what we're going to see down here, sales database okay, has pulled in 188 megabytes. Now if I go down and right down towards the end, my sales database snapshot, 188 megabytes. Now. The way that a database snapshot works is if you do a select on a page from the source database that hasn't changed since the snapshot was created, it will use the page from the source database because there isn't a page yet in the database snapshot because it hasn't changed, it hasn't been pushed into the snapshot. However, here's the thing that most people don't realize. It doesn't just use the buffer that's holding the page from the source database. It has to create another buffer and another copy of the page to be stored in the context of the database snapshot because of the way the buffer pool works. So we pulled in 188 megabytes of data from the sales database through the context of the database snapshot. And even though that data had not changed, it was all manifested in memory in separate copies of all of those pages. Let me prove that to you. So what I can do is I'm going to figure out what pages are being used by that sales table. And I've got this stored procedure. You can get it from another blog post that I did a few years ago. So picking this page, 126. So this is a page in the, the sales database. Actually, let's make sure I do it in the context of the sales database here. Run that again. OK, same thing, 126. So I'm going to do a DBCC page of both of those pages. So page 126, page 126. So I turn on the trace flag that's necessary to get the DBCC page output to go to the current connection and run both of those DBCC pages. 
So it's going to look at the same page, but in, the, in two different database contexts. So the first one, this is from the SalesDB database itself. Okay. The buffer is at this address. Now the buff structure is what points to the actual copy of the, the page in memory. So the buff structure there is at that address. And if we go down, we'll find the other buff structure. Oops, let's see. Here. So we've got 92FC3180. 92, no, it's different. Okay. So what about the page? The page, 8200E000. Let's scroll down till we find. The page, 920C6, compared to. 8.2. So these are different addresses in memory in the buffer pool. Even though these pages are exactly the same because the source database page hasn't changed, they get manifested in two different page structures, two different buff structures, because the buffer pool cannot do sharing of pages between databases. The source database pages essentially get copied, but not copied into the snapshot. They're only copied in memory when they're accessed from the context of the database snapshot. So here's the interesting thing to take away from this demo. You may be thinking that you're using a database snapshot and it doesn't have any effect on the system at all if most of the data in the source database doesn't change. But if you're doing a bunch of reporting on that database snapshot, you're gonna be using a lot of extra buffer pool memory to hold an additional copy of that database memory, that uh, database data that hasn't yet changed. Pretty interesting, eh? Something to be aware of. Anyway, that's the end of uh, this week's demo. Thanks for watching and thanks for being an insider.